It mean, yeah, uh, if uh, like like uh, le le let's see, uh, if we would like to convert uh, like in transportation sector, uh, this is very huge uh, demand of the the liquid fuel. We can convert up to 80% of the liquid fuel uh, by 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 uh, LNG or by by gas, but we need the infrastructure. Yeah, uh, let's say uh, in the marine we need to bunkering system infrastructure, and also in the land transportation we need the the uh, receiving uh, terminal. Uh, that's all facilities uh, can be built by the government. Uh, government can 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 funding the the build of the infrastructure, and then we can we can required. sell the the gas more cheaper than, okay. yeah, because this is for the <laughs> the people in Indonesia. Yeah. I think uh, this is uh, one of the solution that the infrastructure should uh, built by the government yeah. by APBN. Okay. That will be decrease the LNG. Uh, sales price. That's right. So there has to be a specific commitment basically to develop the yes, sector. I yeah. think, I think maybe, the government yeah. should. Maybe Hanga, I'd like to ask you a little bit about how does the Energy Institute, I mean say I, I eat to I, uh, from the outside looking at as an institution which is studying the sector, do you agree with the gentleman here or do you have a different viewpoint? You know, according to my perspective, I think everyone here in the, uh, this panel discussion has touched on uh, some of the key issues uh, once it comes to the uh, exploration and production of natural gas. You know, it takes over run, you know, 15 years before we can even reach a final investment decision. Yeah. Um, and then we need to be able to integrate and interconnect our pipelines because 55% of the demand for natural gas is, the, is in the western part of Indonesia, right? And most of the natural gas supply, there's, e there's one in East Kalimantan, one in Central Sulawesi, and one is in West Papua, but the majority is in eastern part. You know, and we still need to make further. We still need to make further improvements uh, in pipelines, uh, in our infrastructure, and be able to uh, have more liquefaction and regasification terminals. When we, you know, from the point where we explore and produce natural gas, we liquefy it, transport it through LNG tankers, and regasify it in the country. We must be able to, you know, try to reduce the uh, reduce the price because. Right now, Indonesia as a country is looking to import LNG because of its, because of the attractive price. You know, for instance, uh, Pertamina signed a 20-year contract with Sharia Energy. Um, train one was signed in December 2013. Train two was signed in July in 2014. Back then, the price of oil was over $100 per barrel. And the price of domestically produced natural gas in Indonesia was predicted to be higher than imported LNG from the US. But now look what happened to the price of oil. In the summer of 2014, it went down. And now it's at $52 per barrel. And it's expected that the price of natural gas produced in Indonesia is gonna be cheaper than US LNG. This contract is legally binding. It's going on, it's gonna go on for 20 years, from 2019 until 2039. It's gonna change, yeah. Yes, it is. So, but, the beauty of signing a contract with the US is that it has a free destination clause. And so Indonesia doesn't have to import US LNG to Indonesia. You know, they can divert that. And other markets where Pertamina can divert that more expensive LNG can be South America, Brazil, or it can also be in Europe, you know, through EDF Energy. Why EDF Energy? Because EDF Energy has access to most of the regasification terminals um, in Europe. So those are the main issues, uh, and I think everyone in this uh, panel was able to uh, touch on those main issues, and I think coming from IE2I, the Indonesian Energy and Environmental Institute, uh, this is not just the, the, the task of multinational companies, right, or the state-owned enterprise. It's both the public and private sector, as well as you know, the Indonesian government, to be able to cooperate and coordinate with one another, to be able to you know, integrate, interconnect these pipelines, produce natural gas at a price that is competitive, and be more self-sufficient. Okay, thank you, Hanga. Uh, Vishal, uh, you actually had brought on the, the discussion from the perspective that if Indonesia is at an inflection point, as you, as you uh, kind of noticed, uh, I think we've got a good uh, feedback on that point that you raised. Uh, would you like to just comment on what they have said? because I want to then ask a question to all of you about 
you know, how do we go about it? So go ahead. No, uh, so look, I, I echo a lot of these uh, points that have been made, right? Yeah. Uh, the way I think about, uh, to, to your point, what are the issues? Uh, and you know, everyone recognizes the issues, how do we move forward? Yeah. Uh, at least the way I think about this is, uh, I mean, Indonesia has historically been an, an oil economy, right? Uh, the, the major uh, consumption uh, or the energy source has been oil. In fact, one of the very few countries that burns oil to produce power, right? Most of the industries still use oil. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I think it, it's, a, it's a manifestation of this mindset and, and, this, uh, and this oil economy yeah. that Indonesia is now facing this teething problem as it moves away from oil economy to a more diversified energy source economy, right? And, and that, is why, that is why the problems that you mentioned around uh, how do you convince the industries to stop burning liquids and, and move to gas? Uh, what kind of uh, institutions need to come together to start thinking about pricing regulations? Uh, how do you start thinking about a grid or, or, or you know, a grid within a part of the country? I agree, I mean, full natural grid may be not possible, but you know, maybe South Sumatra Java. Uh, how do you encourage uh, building of an infrastructure? I mean, historically, gas has been, infrastructure has been built around, there's a large field, let's build a pipeline, either to an LNG or build a pipeline to a power plant. But now the mindset has to be, is, is very different as you move away from oil economy to a gas economy. And I think that has started over the last uh, uh, five to seven years. Well, I think it's, it's a journey, it, it, it takes some time and I think uh, Indonesia has definitely started moving in that direction. Okay. Thank you, Vishal. Uh, I'd like to actually go into this session which is coming close to the end of the session. Uh, this morning we had a very strong opening we had uh, by Ignatius Jonan, our minister uh, who was here today. And you all know that Pa Jonan is known to be a man of action. Right, and uh, I think we can see that there was a, a, a new a new feel to uh, the way we are approaching oil and gas energy, the whole energy mix. I think the key issues tend to be that what should be an ideal energy mix, uh, rather than defining a mix and then working towards it. I think at some point of time it will settle down into an equilibrium of what is reality. Right now, it's a matter of facilitating that reality to what should be the right mix for Indonesia, given its access to natural resources. So looking at uh, Pa Yonan's style as a man of action, and if you were all uh, an extension of that being a man of action, what is that one thing that you would really like to do? One idea. And it, this could be disruptive. I'm not saying that we look at a simple idea. Uh, why I'm saying disruptive is sometimes in any sector, you need a disruption in order to completely put the cat out of the box. You look at transportation. We have had now Gojek. We have so many other examples of disruption changing the way, the perspective, the complete look. Do you think that there is any disruptive idea or a very constructive idea that you may have which you would feel can change the game, especially in favor of this sector? Uh, who would like to go first? Pa Sampe, maybe? Sila <laughs> Yeah, uh, I really pay attention to what Minister said this yes. morning. Yeah. So if you really want to achieve that, yeah. that energy mix, where you introduce in which our, what do you call it, uh, hydrocarbon base is basically in only around 22 percent. And the rest are quite expensive. Talking about renewable, yeah. must be expensive. So if you talk what exactly can be done, it can be done three things. One, look at it geographically. Do not enforce, for instance, in one region in which El energy A is cheap, and then you enforce to put energy B. B there. Yeah. Don't do it. So if you see coal as a basis there, go to coal there. Don't try to put to put. Don't force the mix. Don't yeah. force the mix. That's number one. Okay. And 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 number two, especially infant. That's infant industry. You need protection. Forget about making taxation out of investment. Okay, yeah. It's very clear. Do not tax investment. You tax when they make profit. Profit. And then even for the profit, it can be postponed. Something like incentive. So for instance, if our fellow from PGN or Pertamina doing that business, do not ask them directly to pay dividend to the government. That's the only way. Don't take the blood out of their body. Yeah. 
That's the second thing. Uh, yeah. You know, don't take the blood out of your body. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I speak in my own language no, that's here. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And the very last thing, I think, yeah. if you really want to go to that, as pa Danny said, we need actually legal infrastructures. Whenever you go to the breakthrough, it means you come, because you mentioned about what you call it, men of action. It means you don't, you have to, uh, I have to be careful. Don't criminalize, uh, what do you call it, innovative ideas, breakthrough. breakthroughs. Okay. That's the way. This is business. Business has to talk in business talking, religion talk in religion talking, government talk in religion talking. Everything has to go in their manner. Okay. That, that, that's the, the same thing. I'm just afraid if somebody <laughs> wants to quote. So if anybody wants to quote it, I will speak in Bahasa later. <laughs> uh, thank you, Pa. Thank you, Pasabe. In fact, truly spoken like a man of action as well. I asked for one and he gave me three different no, no. ideas, four a, different ideas. Yes. No, 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 that's only one, one yeah. A, one B, one C, one D. <laughs> one D. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Babara, would you like to go? Yes, uh, I think uh, yes. Uh, the projected energy mix in uh, Indonesia in 2025 uh, will shift uh, to gas and uh, renewable energy. Yeah. yeah, that's why I think uh, we need to build uh, substantial uh, gas uh, processing and inter island transport infrastructure across uh, Indonesia to address infrastructure constraints. Yeah. I think that's that's uh, the very important and and the challenge uh, in natural gas in Indonesia are uh, supply demand infrastructure pricing and uh, regulation I think uh, that's uh, what uh, will be uh, our, our so you reconfirm actually there's several things that needs to be done simultaneously yeah but all right there's no one answer but you know you need to balance out three different three or four areas yes. to actually get progress yes. that's a valid point yes.